Hey guys, this is Christopher with another Onshape tutorial. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use this set of four tools. So first, the Boolean operation, we need to have two objects. So I'm going to create two. And in this case, I'm going to want them to overlap. So now we have our two objects, and um, they're overlapping. Um, actually, right now, you can see that they're one object. Um, that's because our second extrude added to the first object. Um, in order to have two objects for the Boolean, we need to first um, make sure that we're adding a new part, rather than, um, now we have a new part, rather than adding to the old part. So, there are different colors. You can see right here how the faces are overlapping and they're in the same plane. And now we are ready to use the Boolean operation. So, there are actually three different types of Boolean operations. Um, the first would be Union, which is just going to combine two objects. So, the tools you select would be just which tools you want to, or which parts you want to combine. Um, and now if you look into the part tree, we actually only have one part now. Um, and they are one part. Um, uh, another Boolean operation we can use is subtract. Um, we need to select the tool is going to be what does the cutting. And the target is what stays. So right now our cylinder is our tool and that cuts away that material. Wherever there's intersection, it cuts away that material. And the target, which we selected as part two, is what stays behind. So now we have this partial cylinder cut out of that prism. The third tool is the intersect tool. And if we select both of these parts, um, it doesn't matter what order, um, now, the only place where there still exists a part is wherever they both touch. So, that's where the prism and the cylinder intersect at that object right there. And again, we only have one part. So, in the Boolean operations, you'll always start with more than one part and end up with less than you started. So, that is the Boolean set of operations. Um, now I will discuss the split. I'm going to get rid of this second part right here. We don't need it. Um, actually, I'm not going to use the delete, because um, that's actually an operation. I'm just going to delete the extrude and delete the sketch, which is different, but I'll get to that in just a minute. So. If we want to split this cylinder in half, we can select that and um, a plane. And now we have two objects, which before we just had one. And each half is actually a separate object. Uh, we could come in here with a chamfer and chamfer the edge. And you can see a little bit better that they are two objects. Um, you could also just extrude both of these up as uh, separate objects. Uh, that's just another way to do it. You can also split um, in different planes. For example, if we created another plane and offset it from the top, we could split it along that. And now we've got two cylinders that are half the length, and they're each independent of each other. Um, you can also split a, an object across a surface. So if we create a new sketch and create a spline, um, 
um, and then extrude the spline as a surface, we can split the cylinder in half along that path. So with the split tool again, we want to split the cylinder using that surface. And now we have two separate parts. Um, we have this left half and the right half. And again, if I chamfer it, you can see the edge a little bit better. Um, there you can see that they are two separate parts. But um, that is how you can split a part in half or um, in any way. You could also um, make a plane that's diagonal, uh, that's not parallel or, per or perpendicular to anything, um, and split it in a way that you wouldn't be able to with these three planes. So the next tool is the transform tool. Um, so when you're using this, you have to remember that you're not just moving this around. Um, you're moving it as an operation. It's appearing over here. So once you move it, anything that you do to it after you move it applies to it in the moved position. But anything you do before you move it still applies to it at its original position. So we can move this, uh, translate it a distance um, in any direction. We can move it two inches up, um, normal to that plane we have selected. Uh, now it's moved. But if we created a sketch here and put a circle right there and removed a half of an inch up. Um, the merge scope here, we need to select the part that we want to remove material from. Um, right now there's no material being removed because there's nothing, it's extruding up and there's nothing, there's nothing here to cut. Um, but if we move this extrude before the transform, um, and we need to move the sketch to that it uses, now it's removed up here. Even though the sketch is down here, and the extrude is down there, it still takes away half an inch up here because it took away and then moved it up. So if you look at this extrude, um, now it's not showing the transform we did, it's only showing all the operations up until this extrude. And it hasn't been moved up yet. And then as soon as you accept, um, now it shows um, after all of the operations have been done. So when you transform it, it's not just moving it once. Um, it's a permanent operation, just like any of these other tools that are up here. So um, that brings us to the last of this tutorial, which is the delete parts tool. Um, and it's different than just clicking here and deleting this extrude. Um, in that case, we just removed that completely from these operations. They, it's like they never existed. But if we delete this part, um, the delete part operation shows up on the part, or the operation tree. Um, so we actually still have these, the uh, sketch and the extrude. Um, it's very important because the part, um, even though it's been deleted, we still have the sketches from it. It's not very useful right now because we just created something and deleted it without doing anything with it. But, for example, if we created a helix around it, because we need to have a cylinder to create a helix, then um, if we don't want the cylinder anymore, we can delete the cylinder and we're left with the helix. 
we can't just make a helix without a cylinder, so we need to create one and then delete it. Um, but if we just went into our extrude and deleted the extrude and then deleted the sketch, now the helix has nothing to wrap around. It can't stand by itself. So we need to actually use the delete part and delete the part after the helix is created. If you try to delete the part before the helix is created, it gives an error. So the delete part operation has to come after anything you use that part for. So I hope you found uh, the demonstration of these tools useful, and if you did, please like and subscribe.